Hi, this is Chuck Wolf, and welcome to Place Parts. Today, we're not only going to revisit issues of the embedded past in places of the present, but also the role of nature and how it can literally reflect, in this case, through the medium of water, the timelessness of place. For a thought leader like Tia Kansara, it's about more than a restored canal in Southwest England. She's someone who maintains a web domain at dot earth, which begins to tell you about some of the things she thinks about and advocates using a concept called replenish. We certainly know from many advocates today that we all have a role to play. However, the replenish philosophy is particularly compelling and we're going to talk about it now with Tia Kansara. So Tia, it's great to see you and I see we both have virtual backgrounds. Or maybe, are you in San Francisco? I am currently in Macclesfield. And I am currently in Newbury as I always am in these videos. But this is a day <laughs> view and it's 9.30 in the evening or something, which, which is exactly why I wanted to spend a few minutes with you because we have talked about many of the issues in the book many times. And as you are acknowledged in the introduction as Tia Kansara around the world dot earth, <laughs> um, I, I, do, I do owe you some indebtedness for, for some of the creative parts of this book that uh, are the post lawyer me. But specifically, um, I've introduced you based on a stroll I was taking on the Kennet and Avon Canal with the idea that every place has an embedded memory to it, mm. but it can also reflect off of nature, um, which is something you've spent a lot of time with, especially in the last few years with that magic word replenish that you've given, I think, new meaning to. So I'd like to talk about that, but, but first, if I may, one thing you said to me um, in and around our um, 221B Baker Street adventure, which very much got into the book, was that an imagined place is a legitimate place. That you you're not you're not bound by physical ideas of place. How 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 does that help people trying to figure out an identity for for their for their city or their town or their neighborhood, especially spinning out of the pandemic in this time of remarkable change. If you can think of place more than just your, your four walls, your four physical walls. It's really interesting because at what point has imagination not been in the equation? Good question. Um, the way that we design, the way that we create, where does that even come from? And how much of that is steeped in a reality that is not imagined? Like this entire reality that we individually or together may live in may actually come from a book designed previously, or maybe not even at all. Not yet, yeah. anyway. These backgrounds are making that point. Zoom has enabled us to look. Right. Yeah. We have decided to to be, you know, present to whatever emerges, and imagination is one of those things that I think is open to interpretation. Well, well, let me ask you then, because um, when when you and I first met. Uh, it was actually, we were, we were both speaking at a conference in Adelaide, Australia. So we met um, across, across the world and, and in, a, in a different place and, and um, resolved that we would keep in touch in a variety of places. Now, now those places are virtual, which makes the very, the very point we're, we're both making, but your dot earth reality, your, your, your replenish sort of post Bartlett PhD post quasi architectural um, business I identity. What is re replenish takes us to a whole a whole other level, and I think, at least for me, I look at it as almost like a 
it's a Paul Hawken like defining what each of us can do to help the planet, but not really. You have a different, you have your own spin on it. So please. Yeah, totally. I feel that we're in different places, all of us are. And there is no judgment from where we came from and where we're going. And somewhat as an educator for slash coach, I sometimes feel people judge me for what I'm doing. And sometimes it's because I may not have had the information that another person may have had access to. So that asymmetry in information and experience shouldn't be the reason that I, I do something for the planet. And I think speaking about it, becoming more aware about it, taking steps, iterating, you know, reinforcing my learnings, understanding the complexity of the situation and the overwhelm that someone can experience, Ultimately, for me, the climate emergency is an existential issue. The planet's going to continue exactly the way that it wants to continue. It's whether we're going to be able to, to survive in an environment which is not conducive to human and or natural uh, growth. And it's our relationship that is fundamental to that. So what I mean by relationship is what we have envisioned as the connection points or the connecting points to help us survive what is it that we think that we need to survive and i think survival is almost like a foundational level between which you know there are so many different i mean if we take um the different levels of needs that we have what we're doing is bringing visibility to those things that can be invisible and as a joke, I call myself the architect of the invisible because I'm not an architect, I'm an economist. And I met an architect and through which we've, you know, started a company. But what's fascinating for me is that when we design our environments, we often forget that it's our choice to do everything in that environment. And epigenetically speaking, we have the ability to completely change our experience Mm -hmm. in every way that we want to. Um, and in some of your talks, some of your TED talks, for instance, I, I do think you try and bring this home in a very personal way. Um, and maybe you can do, you know, give a, give a, give a mini TED talk. Uh, you know, what's your messaging with Replenish Earth? Um, because you spent a lot of time when we could all still travel in a sense, investing in projects, both you know, in, in all the ways one invests intellectually and emotionally, uh, but you know, just as we move out of this, what what is something that is climate conscious, earth conscious, that that a community can can be involved in with with all the imagination that you so aptly describe? The first thing is to become aware of the entire cycle of something. Okay. So let's say as a consumer, I buy something from somewhere and it goes to whatever the end of its cycle is. But what I have visibility over is not the entire aspect of that product from start to finish. Mm -hmm. So one thing, huge tangible you know, takeaway is who made your product? How did they make it? Is it good for the environment? if that is one of your markers of impact, positive impact for the environment, I'm not talking about negative. Um, I'm talking about not even net zero, right? I'm talking about positive. That means regenerative. That means restorative. That means replenishing. Is that where they are? Are there values in alignment with what you want? And then are you in the container, for example, the city, the environment, the ecosystem, the home, the wherever, the physical environment, are you within the framework that matches that value system. Often as consumers, we see this bit here, right? Mm -hmm. We buy something and then, you know, maybe you throw it into recycling, but is the entire system, so a broaden your perspective and is the entire system something that you value? Second, if you don't value it and it doesn't align, do something about it. And what are the options? You can choose not to do something, you can choose to do something. You could choose to change something. You can choose to, um, you know, create a, a curate a community that is focused specifically on a particular aspect of something. 
And I think the amount that we can do is gigantic. So I won't go into too much detail. I am quite an abstract thinker. And for me, the broad spectrum is find your place and do that one thing well. And for me, that is the eco alignment piece. How can we transition companies and businesses like companies? So how, how might we transition businesses, governments, individuals mm -hmm. to appreciate where fossil fuels have, have brought us, where capitalism has brought us, where the philosophy of accumulation has, has brought us mm -hmm. and to take what is important as a learning and to let go of that which is not. To move and transition and bridge right. to the ecosystem that we see ourselves living in that is nourishing not only to ourselves, but uh, to the entire ecosystem that we live in. And so is that what replenish means? Um, it's, it sound, you know, at, 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 first, at first glance, replenish may be the, the, old, um, the old adage, you know, leave your campsite in, in better shape than, than you That's found as simple it. as it is. Yeah. Leave the world better than you came into it. Okay. And right? so give right. more than you're taking. Right. And so so that's I think that's a very important element to to understand how that plays out in a variety of settings, be they virtual or actually physical settings or community settings and 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 how decision makers um, you know approach change with with with, with that lens uh, that you've that you've described and that I think that's wonderful because it it you know I've, I've been all about critical thinking and helping people think beyond um, mission based we're all saying save the planet we're all saying climate change is um, an issue but I think what you're talking about is you know understand where you sit in this, cosmos right all of that is going to be big right. all of it's going to be guilt inducing overwhelming shameful shameful look what you've done i'm you know better than you are because guess what i've done this and you haven't right i don't think we have a place for judgment because judgment almost feels like it's a binary you're good and bad mm -hmm. right how far can we go so let's say i mean i have a tesla but if I go beyond the actual supply of like, you know, for, for many projects around the world, they think that, um, and, and we fall into this bracket a lot, right? We think that it begins from where we thought it began, or where when we became aware of something. Mm -hmm. The classic idea that all of a sudden, you know, people are talking about plastics when many of us have, have, have been in that space for a really long time. So it's not new, it's not new to us, but when it's new to you, you get really excited about it. Right. So when you become aware of something, that's when you can, you know, put your feet in and say, right, right. what would you like me to do? How, how might I begin? How can I add myself? So this journey is what we call the journey to eco-alignment. Right. And, I th and it's a very, very important, I think, to, to have this frame of reference when we talk about sustaining something. Um, because, again, we, I think, you know, we fall to pray to the simpler messages. And, and it, it, it really takes a lot of hard work to, to think through things in the way that you've articulated and not everyone is, is prone to do that. Sustaining the status quo, hoping for a different result from the same input is madness, right? Thinking that you can carry on doing the harm that you are to the planet and then putting it into a CSR department to say that you've, so you've sorted it out, it doesn't work change the business from the actual inception of it. Mm -hmm. Preventative sustainability is where we're at. It's like preventative health. You know, going to the doctor and saying, I've got a cough and I don't know what to do because I've been puking up, it doesn't really help. What have you done to stop yourself from getting to that position? I think this is where we are right now. Well said, and um, thank you again. Thank you, Chad. Finally, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Place Parts, including Tia's broad view of place, how we see and imagine it and experience it, as well as our individual responsibilities to a global place as our cities, inhabited spaces, as well as natural places change over time. That's all for this episode, and we'll see you again soon here on Place Parts.